Uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, 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 Maine in the ocean century, the 21st century. We live on the planet ocean, not on the planet Earth. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by the ocean, 90-odd percent of the biosphere, the, the habitable uh, ecosystems on Earth uh, are ocean. Uh, and so here we live. Uh, as we all f face uh, climate change, uh, the ocean uh, is, the, is the part of the, the, the Earth system, the ocean system, that, that is going to be the most impacted. Uh, it's going to warm up uh, uh, over time, not average, but different, space, uh, different speeds, different places. Uh, there will be times when current, fundamental current systems that, that, that create weather will change. Uh, there will be you know, rising uh, uh, water level. And what that means along the coast of this state uh, is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is frightening. And as someone who runs a marine research institute, the, the question of climate change and, and you know, what to do about that as a, as a little organization, uh, as a little state, uh, in the face of, of what's happening in China and India and this country in terms of energy consumption is, is overwhelming. Now, the interesting thing is that in, until, until earlier uh, this decade, uh, uh, climate change was an abstract idea that a big part of the world was denying. Um, uh, but things are changing. Uh, with, with climate change comes uh, increasing frequency and intensity of storms. And, and Katrina really was the, was the event in this country that, that, that brought uh, climate change into the living room uh, in, a, in a way that none of us can, can deny. More recently, we've seen the BP spill, uh, the BP spill down in, in the Gulf. Um, uh, we all are aware of what a tragic and, and monumental event this was. And it simply reflects that, that as we drift from a population of 6.5 billion to 9 billion, we're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper in the ocean uh, on our hunt for energy. And this kind of event is going to happen more frequently. And it, it's, it's tragic on, not, on lots of levels, not the least of which is that in the past 20 years in this country, the search for, for oil actually had been done really competently. Um, I don't say that as an apologist for the oil industry, but just in a, as a matter of fact, it had been done competently. And it's, it's a tragedy that we're now outside of, 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 our, of our envelope of competence there. And then there's fish. Somewhere in the next uh, 20, 30, 40 years, uh, some billion, billionth of us, I don't know whether it's uh, the seven billionth or the eight billionth, but one of us could eat the last fish. And, and, and that's a big problem because fish is, uh, is healthy, uh, it's a great food for us, it's efficient to produce, uh, and it's historically been available for, for populations that were, were marginal. So in the face of all this, uh, what does a, a little place like Maine do? Uh, uh, what, what, what can we do here? And, and the way I think about this is it's around competitive advantage. How do we stitch together um, the, the upside of who we are here as opposed to the downside. So we're a little place, we're a little state, there's only a million and a quarter of us, we know each other, we, we share an extraordinary sense of community when you compare us to many other places in the world. Uh, and so we, we have this set of advantages. One of them that's not so obvious to most of, most of us is the, is the Gulf of Maine. Uh, you see here the Gulf of Maine uh, up here off of New England. What you're seeing on this slide, the, the, the hotter, the warmer the color, the more life. Uh, it, it's really reflecting phytoplankton, single cell flora in the ocean. And conversely, the deeper or, or cooler the color, the, the less, the less uh, uh, life. And, and the fact is the ocean is a, is a desert. It's not wet. It's a desert with very little life in it, except in certain places. There are a dozen places around the, country, around the world. Uh, the Gulf of Alaska, up here, out here off of Peru, up here in the... Gulf of Maine, Georges Bank, and, and many others. Uh, but there are dozens of these places, a dozen of these places around the, around the world that are, that are extraordinary ecosystems. And we have one here. Uh, and it's in relatively good, good health, despite what you hear uh, in the news. We also have laptop infrastructure. Uh, every seventh and eighth grade student in, in this state is given a laptop free. It doesn't matter where they live. Uh, it doesn't matter who they are, uh, who their parents are, they get a laptop. Uh, that's a big deal. There's, there's no other state in the country or in the world uh, where 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 one-to-one -one com uh, computing is is ubiquitous or, or accessible, uh, regardless of who you are. And so we're we're among other things we're, we're a digital test bed. We're a place where innovative uh, education strategies can be tested. And to the introduction, the point of the introduction, uh, we have energy. We have. Uh, here off the, off the coast of Maine, an extraordinary wind field. 
it, it blows uh, 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 stronger and, and more frequently than many other places. We're close to major uh, population centers, and so we have energy. And we have a, an unusual mix uh, of activities going on around the state, uh, online uh, initiatives, uh, efforts in the state's uh, research laboratories to, to educate, to figure out how to educate kids, and, and efforts out in the field uh, to raise science literacy. And in a small state, uh, you can actually imagine uh, driving a state's emergence as a, as a science literate uh, state. And so how do we play these advantages? How do, how do we make something happen uh, that can have a broader impact? Um, well, some interesting things are happening. Uh, all we read uh, in the news or all we hear on TV when it comes to fish is bad news. And, and in fact, there's a lot of good news happening uh, here in, in Maine right now. And, and Maine's on the cutting edge of a, of a paradigm shift uh, uh, to a different way of, of harvesting fish. Um, there are about 900 ground fishermen, people who fish for cod, haddock, monkfish, flounders. There are about 900 of these people left in, in New England. And on May 1 of this year, uh, 680 of them shifted into an entirely different uh, uh, management paradigm uh, that involves them uh, forming, they're basically harvesting cooperatives. They can self-select so all of us in this room could, could opt into creating a cooperative. What happens is we get allocated a percentage of whatever the sustainable quota is, uh, we get allocated that percentage year to year. So if next year it's 100 million tons and we had 10%, well, we get 10 million tons of, of fish. And what's different is that we're free to go catch that fish pretty much however we want to, as long as we stay within that envelope. So we're freed up but held accountable in contrast to today or, or, or four months ago when, when fishermen were given a dwindling number of days uh, down to 30 or 40 a year. Imagine if you had to earn your living and only able to work for 30 or 40 days. Uh, um, uh, wouldn't be all bad, but uh, <laughs> hard, to, hard to pay the mortgage. Uh, uh, so this shift is happening. Uh, it's happening throughout New England. And um, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a radical event. And what's so interesting, this is, this is four months in, uh, a third of the way through this shift. The, the blue columns here are, are these, uh, these harvesting cooperatives, 16 of them, uh, harvesting uh, fish uh, 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 within the envelope, regardless of whether it's a scarce, scarce fish or an abundant fish, within the envelope of being about a third of the way in the year. The 220 fishermen who aren't in these cooperatives are obviously outside the envelope. And, and think about that. This has been a, a total economic transformation of an industry, and already we're getting an indication that it's working. And, and this is a crisis that's been going on for 20 or 30 years, and it's, it's changed. It's changed. Oops. And, and the payoff is, is, a, uh, is a way of life that, 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 a, that a group of survivors are going to be able to... to uh, uh, to make good livings of and, and provide good food for the, for the near future. And a very different uh, uh, dimension, uh, the one of energy. Uh, four or five years ago, nobody in Maine was talking about, uh, about ocean wind. Um, in the last uh, three or four years, the, the University of Maine has emerged as a national leader in, in ocean wind research. Uh, 18 months ago, the legislature unanimously, unanimously approved legislation that, uh, that authorized the creation of five test sites to, to test uh, ocean wind turbines. And so all of a sudden, Maine is the only kind of convenient test bed for these kinds of technologies in the world. Um, while this is going on, the, those are the three of these uh, sites are happening in the yellow circles. Uh, up here on, on Vinyl Haven Island uh, 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 in Penobscot Bay, there are three turbines that were built on that island, on the island, that have turned uh, the, the, the island of North Haven into a, a very vulnerable island community uh, making its energy, its electricity from diesel to a net exporter of electricity uh, just in its first year of, of operation. And then way down in Eastport, uh, there's a tidal genera generator in, water in, in the water and, and uh, there's a company here in Maine that's rapidly emerging as one of the world's leaders in, in, in tidal energy. This has all happened in the last four or five years. Um, and in, in, in also a year ago, uh, the, the legislature approved a, an ocean energy policy that set a goal by 2030 uh, for this state to be generating five gigawatts of electricity from ocean wind. Uh, five gigawatts. A, a gigawatt roughly is the production of a, of a standard issue nuclear power plant. Uh, so we could have five of these out here. 
there's lots of, of, of uh, complexity to this happening, but, but it could happen. We have the wind, we have the proximity to markets, and, it, and it's going to ca cause us to think differently. Uh, among other things, we're going to have to think about uh, the province of Quebec, uh, because they have an incredible battery up there. They have an incredible battery. And now to, to bring around, a, we have a third idea in here. Um, our kids are going to get stuck uh, with the consequences of climate change. We're going we're gonna to all uh, die before it gets too bad. Uh, our kids get stuck with the consequences, and, and they're going to end up being, uh, to borrow Zoe's term, uh, the solutionaries, which I just love. Uh, and uh, uh, interestingly, here in Maine, um, some of you may have noticed back in, in January, it was announced that Central Maine Power uh, had won a $100 million grant from the Department of Energy. And with that $100 million, uh, they're gearing up to put a smart meter uh, in every one of their 530,000 customer households. Now, a smart meter, most of us know the, the energy meter uh, in the house that has that little thing that goes around like this uh, inside it, and the more energy we're using, the quicker it goes around. Well, a, a smart meter is digital, uh, and it, it, it broadcasts energy consumption through a Wi-Fi uh, technology, so it can be uh, broadcast anywhere. It can be read on, a, on an anything uh, that's uh, uh, enabled. And so all of a sudden, uh, uh, we're going to have the, the equivalent of a, of a Prius dashboard uh, on our person uh, that tells us uh, how much energy we're consuming. Uh, Bangor Hydro, that has 130,000 customers, uh, didn't get the grant. And, uh, and uh, interestingly, over the last three or four years, they, on their own initiative, have uh, gone up the process of putting one of these smart meters in every household. So, in addition to being the state with the Gulf of Maine and the state with the laptop capacity, uh, the state with the ocean wind, we're also going to be the state uh, with the smart grid. And we're one of four or five states in the, in the country that are emerging as, as uniquely smart grid enabled. And so there's, this, there's an interesting cross-section of 10 or 12 organizations in the state working all these things together, uh, putting together a system that would enable these seventh and eighth grade kids with these laptops to use this smart meter technology to, to monitor their family's uh, energy consumption. Now, for any of you that have had the pleasure of living with a seventh or eighth grader, uh, you know uh, that they have a unique ability to, to, to influence their family's behavior. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and so think about the Prius effect uh, uh, across the state of Maine when, when these kids all have this capability. Um, the, the, the research that's been done, particularly in Europe, around these kinds of, of energy consumption, uh, kind of real-time energy consumption tools, is that if you put one in place, um, like a Prius, it, the people that use these tend to reduce their energy consumption between 5 and 18 percent. 5 and 18 percent. You say, well, that's not much. Well, look at what, what the argument was about in Copenhagen when the, when the climate change uh, negotiation broke down last year. It was those order of numbers in terms of carbon reduction. And so the, the, it's quite possible that over the next couple of years, a group of 11 and 12 year olds in the state are going to have us all at their fingertips uh, and the potential to, to reduce our electricity consumption by 5 to 18 percent. So w where this is, is taking me is that, is that you know, the, the specter of climate change, uh, uh, particularly from an ocean perspective, is, is, is horrendous. I mean, it's, it's the end of the world as we know it. And yet, here in Maine, we have uh, an unusual mix of, of tools and opportunities at hand to have a real impact. And, and I think for, for, this, uh, for this state and this area to emerge as an unusual uh, island of healing uh, from a global perspective around, around questions that really challenge us all. So with that, thank you very much.